Welcome, patriot, to Boston Common, the start of the Freedom Trail. Feast your ears and learn more about the historic Freedom Trail. And learn the history of Boston Common. You're a tour guide? Error. Response not recognized. Welcome, patriot, to Boston Common, the start of the Freedom Trail. I'm interested in the history of this place. Let us go back hundreds of years. It is the year 1775. For seven years, thousands of British soldiers have camped on this very soil in their orderly rows of tents led by General Thomas Gage. They seek to quell the growing tide of revolution the night of April 17. The officers are assembled, General Gage. Four days prior, I received word from the Earl of Dartmouth. We have our orders. Lieutenant Colonel Smith, gather 21 companies of our best men and carry them with the utmost expedition and secrecy to Concord. Once there, you will seize and destroy all artillery, ammunition, provisions, tents, small arms, and all military stores. But what of the colonists, General? Take care that the soldiers do not plunder the inhabitants or hurt private property. But we can and must defang them. So, near midnight, Colonel Smith marched with 700 redcoats to face brave American patriots in the Battle of Lexington and Concord, and thus the Revolutionary War began. Continue on the trail to walk through more of our great city's history. Welcome, patriot, to Boston Common, the start of the Freedom Trail. Tell me about the Freedom Trail. Starting here at Boston Common, follow the red path as it winds its way through our great city's streets. Markers on the trail are placed at many famous historic sites. See Paul Revere's house, the old North Church, the old State House, to Bunker Hill, and many more all's quiet across the commonwealth stay safe out there seven and a some sort of code four and l definitely a code Now a six, I don't know. Three I. Arr! 
18 next. One R. Hmm. The trail is by the church. All's quiet across the Commonwealth. Stay safe out there. Got my attention. You're tuned to Great Radio, voice of the Minutemen. Nothing to report the Spins. Oh, so it starts with R. It's eight AM. Nothing to report. Stay safe out there, everyone. Stop right there. You went through a lot of effort to arrange this meeting. But before we go any further, answer my questions. Who the hell are you? Why don't you tell me who you are first? In a world full of suspicion, treachery, and hunters, we're the synths' only friends. We're the railroad. So answer my question. I followed the Freedom Trail, looking for the railroad. I'm not your enemy. If that's true, you have nothing to fear. Who told you how to contact us? I helped Carl out of a jam. He knows a guy who knows a guy, and they hooked me up with a lead. We'll look into that. I'm Desdemona, and I'm the leader of the railroad. And you are? Deacon, where have you been? You're having a party. What gives with my invitation? I this need intel. Freedom, Who is this? Wow! Newsflash, boss. This lady is kind of a Nothing big deal report. out there. Stay safe, people. Do we know each other? I didn't need to meet you to hear about you. You've made waves. Does the Silver Shroud mean anything to you? I heard he took out Sinjin's gang all by himself. Pretty remarkable, huh? And, as if that wasn't enough, you're the leader of the Minutemen. I hear you cleared out the castle. Everyone's talking about that. So, you're vouching for her? Yes. Trust me. She's someone we want on our side. That changes things. So, stranger, why did you want to meet with us anyway?
My son, Sean, was kidnapped. I'm looking for help to find him. Someone stole your boy? That's terrible. Do you know who did it? For your sake, I hope the Institute isn't involved. Kellogg kidnapped him. Well, you got your revenge. But that doesn't bring your son back. I'll have Deacon look into this. If anyone can find a lead on your boy, he can. If we're going to be dealing with you, I need to make sure we're on the same page. You know what a synth is, right? 9 a.m. here at Radio Freedom. I've heard rumors. What are they really? The Institute created them. Synthetic humans. They're mostly organic. Part machine. Somewhere along the line, they became more than just constructs. They think, they feel, and they act just like you and me. The Institute treats synths as property, as tools. That sounds like slavery. Exactly. So we seek to free the synths from their bondage. Give them a chance at a real life. I have a question. The only question that matters. Would you risk your life for your fellow man? Even if that man is a synth? This is Radio Freedom, broadcasting all day. I risk my life for people every day. <laughs> Makes no difference to me if it's a human or a synth. Well said. We'll do what we can to look into your missing boy. What the Institute has done to your family and others is what drives us. Normally, you're exactly the type of person we try and recruit. But right now, we don't have the time to train up a new agent. There are, however, other valuable ways you can contribute. And in turn, we can help you. See Deacon for details. You're free to go. Hope you didn't mind the reception. When you tango with the Institute, you gotta be careful when someone new gets on the dance floor. Do you really have to be so cagey? The precautions are necessary. In our business, if we underestimate our enemy's capabilities, it's game over. But it's all good now. I vouched for you, nobody got shot. Still, I would consider it a close personal favor if you didn't sell us out to the Institute. Thanks. So, tell me. Why did you vouch for me? In our little outfit, it's my job to know things. And with everything you've done, it's clear you're capable. A dangerous enemy. And I'm betting you're to a valuable ally. Freedom, voice of the Minutemen. Nothing to report but why the trust? You can't be taking it all on faith. I don't know if we can trust you, but I hope we can. We just survived a hell of a crisis, so we may just be a teeny weeny bit desperate for new members. If everything was sunshine and bottle caps, we'd probably play a longer getting to know you game. But we don't have that luxury. Really? Is that all? You just don't give up. All right. I have a short list of people I think would be a good fit for our family. You piqued my interest, so maybe I asked around. Did my homework. If you hadn't found us, there's a chance I would have found you instead. Thanks for saving me the trip. So Dez wants me to make you a tourist. That's what we call someone who helps out with the odd job here and there. What a waste. I'm just gonna come out and say this. The railroad needs you. You sure you need me? Desdemona didn't seem to care. She's just thinking of the time and manpower it would take to train you. And if you were some hick from the burbs that didn't know your ass from a rocket launcher, she'd be right. But I'm betting someone like you just needs a few pointers. And a target. You got my attention. I got a job. Too big for me? Just perfect for the two of us. You help me out, we turn a few heads, and then Dez invites you into the fold. Then, if you get into a bind and need some help, your buddies in the railroad got your back. What's the job? So, up front, the only thing I'll say is that it's gonna be a wild and dangerous ride, but probably nothing new for someone like you. Sign me up, then. Perfecto. Let's meet up at the old freeway outside of Lexington. I'll fill you in once you get there.
I take you look like you could use this. Your thoughts? I get the good neighbor lifestyle and folks in a place. Right? Oh, nothing. Gotcha. This is Radio Freedom, broadcasting all day, all across the Commonwealth. Nothing new to report. Keep it tuned here for Minutemen Alerts. Deacon, is that you? Like the disguise? It's Wastelander camo. This is my pile of garbage, asshole. Back off. Good, right? <laughs> You're lucky I didn't do one of my face swaps, too. You can change your face. I put myself under the knife every year or two. New face, new body, you know, the full makeover. It keeps our enemies guessing. I almost didn't recognize you. That's the point. So, about the job. The railroad's only recently been using the old North Church. Our old base was underneath the Slocum's Joe. We had a pretty sweet setup until the Institute found us. Your base was under a donut shop? That's awesome. It's a lot better than it sounds. Well, it was, until it was blown to hell. What happened? Our HQ was strong. Defensible. Heck, we thought it was secure. Inside a minute, the Institute troopers breached the doors and turned it into a shooting gallery. The survivors didn't have time to grab anything. So we're getting something important we had to leave behind. What exactly are we looking for? I'll tell you when we get inside. I know that's a bum deal, but strategic ignorance has saved our organization more times than I can count. We got a tourist nearby. He or she has information on the base, so let's pump him for information before we dive in. For now, I'll take point. So I'm looking for rail signs, symbols we use to send messages to each other. If you like that, we got signs and counter signs, dead drops, even a secret handshake. All right, maybe the handshake never got on. Anyway, the tourist should have a trail left for us. Here we go, rail signs. The arrow in the center indicates a direction. So our tourist is up ahead. Let's keep going.
Got another rail sign. Right there. Do the living. Another. We're probably close. See the plus in the center? That means there's an ally nearby. You take point on the conversation. Look, no matter what he says, you just say, mine is in the shop. Trust me. <clears throat> Once your friend gets here, how about we have a chat, huh? Once your friend gets here, how about we have a chat, huh? Hi. Hey. Hi. Oh, thank God. You have a Geiger counter? Do you have a goddamn Geiger counter? Mine is in the shop. Who the hell is he? HQ said they were sending one agent, not two. Sorry, I'm new. She's just showing me the ropes. All right. The wall is my witness. I thought I was dead. It's about goddamn time you headquarters bastards got here. Are you in danger? I signed on for light recon. But that little slocum's jaw of yours is crawling with goddamn chrome dome synth sons of bitches. <sighs> if I haven't been made yet, I'll be spotted when I leave here. I'm goddamn trapped. The front's fortified to hell and back. They place mines all over the goddamn place. Wait. They have a minefield? Yeah, the mother of all minefields. I couldn't draw you a map if I tried. I appreciate all you've done. I hope it helps. I really do. As soon as it's safe, I'm getting the hell out of here. So if you need anything else, better ask soon. Hey there. Well, isn't Ricky just a ray of sunshine? You think he's telling the truth? Speaking of truth, why did you lie to Ricky? My job in the railroad is intel. That job's easier if no one knows who I am. So, I lied. I do that. So you handled the talky talk and I got to watch from the sidelines. Go team us. Why would Ricky lie? People always got reasons to lie. The Institute could have turned him. Or, more likely, He's just seriously pissed off at us. Take your pick. He doesn't strike me as the dishonest type. Yeah, that's my read too. First rule in this business is never go against your gut. So if we take him at his word, the front door has mines, synths, and probably other fun and exciting prizes. So we're going in through the escape tunnel. The donut shop has an escape tunnel? What? Doesn't everyone have an escape tunnel? Seriously, though? Thank God for that tunnel. If it weren't for that, there wouldn't be any railroad left. The tunnel has got to be easier than a frontal assault. Easier, but no cakewalk. You lead us there, pal. I got you covered.
back entrance is safer, but be ready for Gen 1s and 2s. So it's time you learn why we're here. We're retrieving a prototype developed by our good Dr. Carrington. What can you tell me about the Gen 1s and 2s? The synths didn't start off as nigh-perfect copies of human beings. The Institute had to work up to that level of hubris. Gen 1s and 2s were stepping stones along the way. The Railroad's not fully united on how we feel about them. What's there to be divided about? Everyone wants to liberate the Gen 3s, the human-looking synths. Some of the synths in the Railroad, like Glory, think we should help earlier models, too. But Gen 1s are basically the same as, well, a Protectron. So the line gets muddy. Do we defend AI rights? Terminals? Hell, turrets? Anytime it gets brought up, pah, fireworks. All the old arguments flare up. The upshot is Glory and some others won't run missions like this. Who's Dr. Carrington? All goes well. We'll meet him soon enough. Ready to go. The first step is to override the security line. Detected. Intelligence. Place that never 
This neighborhood sure that got play vacated button? recently. Carrington, Stanley, Salas Agrote, Suprema Lex. Open says me. Yes. So Tommy Whispers didn't make it out. He died protecting our secrets. Let me see. There. Tommy would want you to have his hand in. Don't let it size fool you. What's so special about the gun? Tinker Tom restored it. You'll meet him later. It's cutting edge old world tech. It's powerful and, more importantly, quiet. You'll never find another weapon like it. Grab Carrington's prototype. You turn that over to Desdemona, and she'll have to let you into our merry band. There's an elevator at the end of the hall, and should be a hell of a lot easier fighting the chrome domes on this side of the line. Is someone present? Movement detected.
and the new girl patched me up, put me on her shoulder, and blasted her way through the rest of the complex. Synths everywhere. Carrying you the whole time? Amazing, right? That's one word for it. Deacon told me you single-handedly secured Carrington's prototype, disabled a minefield, and wiped out a hundred Gen 1s. So is any of that true? Every word he said was true. And then some. A full hundred. I... I can't even imagine. See? Just like I said, boss. I was expecting Deacon to grab a full team, including Glory, to secure that prototype. But instead, just the two of you cleared out the entire switchboard. You'd be insane not to sign her up, Des. You've certainly made an impression on Deacon. He's never spoken about, or lied about, anyone so highly before. Welcome to the railroad, Agent. Why should I join you? If you're having any doubts, you shouldn't. Not very many of us live to retirement. But if you're like me, that doesn't matter. There are great wrongs that need righting. Glad to be aboard. It seems we're very lucky to have you. So you're in. Now we need to know what to call you. Secrecy keeps us alive. Code names are a part of that. So what's yours? Have any suggestions? No. It doesn't work like that. Your life, your name, your choice. Hmm, let me think. It's a big decision. Take your time. I don't want a code name. Code names aren't optional. All agents need to keep their identities secret to protect themselves and those close to them. <laughs> I really don't want to choose. Suit yourself. We'll call you Wanderer. Seems fitting. Your first official order is to deliver Dr. Carrington his prototype and see if he can use another pair of hands. But first, it's time to meet the rest of the gang. <laughs> HQ is one of our most tight What was it? In or out. You never Death says we stay here until you leave. No pressure. Hey. Hey, you. You the new heavy? Wanderer, right? What do you mean, heavy? A heavy. Someone able to take whatever shit the Institute and Commonwealth dishes out and come back for more. So the switchboard was crawling with bad guys. Lines and shit, too. Any of that true? Or was Deacon bullshitting me again? Why don't you believe his story? Saving sense ain't easy. So when we score a win, sometimes the propaganda gets laid on thick. How'd you take down the old HQ? Please tell me you didn't go along with Deacon's in and out like a ghost crap. We found weaknesses in the facility's defenses and exploited them. Mm. I guess that's one way of doing it. Well, welcome to the party. After what happened to Tommy Whispers, we need another tough son of a bitch that can get shit done. Who's Tommy Whispers? Tommy was a second heavy at HQ. He went KIA after the Institute assholes took out the switchboard. With him gone, I've been running missions nonstop. So I'm damn happy you're here. They call me Glory, the angel of death, the ass-kicking poster child of a liberated synth. So you're a synth? That's what the maid in the Institute stamp on my ass says. I have a lot of questions about synths, about the Institute. Would you be willing to answer a few? If I have to. I know a whole lot less than you think. <laughs> Mainly, avoided surface detail. Combing over ruins and shit for salvage. The few times I was in the Institute proper, all I was to them was their thinking, feeling, hammer. What's the Institute like? Clean. Lots of metal and machines. But I really only saw a few rooms of it. The barracks and where I worked. I helped those assholes make more synths. Synth development is what they called it. How do they make synths? Damn if I know. The machines are massive, complicated. Not like anything I've seen out here. No matter what Des and others say, synths ain't human. We're assembled bone by bone, 
muscle by muscle. I've seen it. I'm gonna hit the range. I need to shoot something. Now. What's up? Excuse me. Welcome to the family. We're a colorful and arguably insane bunch. But you're stuck with us now. Speaking of which, if you don't mind a sidekick, let's keep a good thing going and travel together some more. Don't they need you here? My job's mainly intel. So the more places I go, the better I'm doing it. And you are just one big beautiful distraction. Plenty of opportunities to learn secrets moving around in your shadow. Not right now. Well, if you change your mind. So, seems you know how to hold your own. I'd had my doubts when we first hit the road. Oh yeah? What kind of doubts? You kidding me? You look like you'd fallen out of the vault that day. I thought I'd see you picking your teeth out of the gutter by sunup. It's just real rare these days. Find someone who's not willing to take things the way they're handed to them. Too many good folks not willing to get their hands dirty. And too many assholes taking advantage of it. Look at what happened to Diamond City. Before McDonough took over, it was a half-decent place to live. A little stricter than I usually go for, but not terrible. I thought he and I had a pretty happy childhood. But then he decides he's gonna try and get elected with his anti-ghoul crusade. Mankind for McDonough. Before you know it, you got families with kids lining up to drag folks they call neighbor out of their homes and throw them to the ruins. You and McDonough knew each other as kids? Oh yeah. Guy's my brother. Grew up together in a little shack on the waterfront. Guy was the standard big brother. Entitled. Punchy. Like to shove rotten potatoes down my shirt and slap my back. But I never thought he'd be capable of something like what they did to those ghouls. Why did McDonough campaign against the ghouls? Because he thought he could win. There'd always been a pretty clear divide between the folks living in the stands and those down on the field. I'm not convinced they didn't do it just to improve their view. I remember storming into his office above the stands after the inauguration speech. He was just standing there, staring out the window, watching as the city turned on the ghouls. He didn't even look at me. He just said, I did it, John. It's finally mine. Should have killed him right there, but I don't think it would have changed anything. Instead, I pleaded with him, begged him to call it off. He said he couldn't. He had nothing against the ghouls. He was just carrying out the will of the people and he couldn't betray the voters. And then he smiled, that hideous fucking mile-long smile. He never smiled like that when we were kids. I didn't even recognize him. Wait, what do you mean you didn't recognize him? I don't know. Just didn't seem like the guy I grew up with. When I'd first heard the rumors, he'd been swapped for a synth. Thinking back on that night, I thought it made a lot of sense. But now, I don't know. I don't think I buy it. I've seen him since then, and there's no way they copied him that perfectly. Even got his tight-ass walk. But at the time, I just needed to get the hell away from him. Him and that whole damn city. He murdered those ghouls. Him and that whole damn city. I still wasn't a ghoul at this point, so I didn't have to leave. But I couldn't bring myself to stay in that cesspool after that. I'd been sneaking off the good neighbor for years to get decent chems, so I knew the safe routes. I managed to track down a couple of the families, lead them there, but most couldn't get used to the good neighbor lifestyle. I brought them food for a couple of weeks, but after a while, they just disappeared. Folks in Diamond City signed their death warrants, and all the good people were willing to just sit by and watch. I felt like I was the only one who saw how screwed up things truly were, who couldn't just pretend things were fine. Still feel that way. Or, I did. Until I met you. I know I run my mouth, but having someone who sees the world for what it is, and is willing to do something about it, it's meant a lot to me. I feel damn lucky to have you as a friend. And that's what we are? Friends? Well, now that you mention it, I have been having slightly more impure thoughts than usual. Maybe we'll get to uh, 
act on those. <laughs> but I guess we should probably head out, huh? After you. Some of the people you meet will be institute replacements, synth duplicates, so be careful. Hey, what you Rook. Say. The name's Drummer Boy. It's my envious job to keep track of all the dead drops and grab incoming agents and tell them where they're needed. I don't suppose you want to switch places. Why is that a bad job? Runners at the bottom of the totem pole in the railroad. Just a hair above tourists. Being HQ's runner is a cut above field work, I suppose. Ah, someone's got to do it. We'll be seeing each other. A lot. Up top, you gotta be careful. Never know when you're being watched. This is it. It may lack the amenities of the switchboard, but it's safe, and we've taken precautions not to be surprised. Things are chaotic, so there's plenty for you to do. Ah, it's our newest agent. Testimona told me to give you this. An extraordinary feat to recover this, but that's hardly the point. Without a lick of training, and us knowing hardly anything about you, Des has invited you to join HQ. It would have been nice if she had consulted with her second in command. But what's done is done. <sighs> Since you're here now, we might as well put you to work. I'm counting on each of you. What? You don't think I can handle a dangerous job? The danger doesn't concern me. Your work at the switchboard proves you can deal with that. I just hope the mission doesn't require knowledge about synths in our procedures. Something you've had scant opportunity to learn. Tell me what you need, Doc. One of our field agents, Old Man Stockton, needs help with the runaway synth, H-222. So headquarters, as always, puts out the fires that others can't be bothered to put out themselves. The paranoid old bat won't even tell us the problem. He insists that we get our intel from a dead drop. What's a dead drop? Tossing a body from a high ledge. Keep up. Oh, dear Lord. A dead drop is a mailbox with a rail sign on it. It's a common means of communication for us, so keep an eye out for them. When you make contact with Stockton, he won't give you the time of day unless you give him the proper countersign. The current sign is, do you have a Geiger counter? And the counter is, mine is in the shop. Please tell me Deacon taught you that at least. You can trust me with this. I'll get it done. You sound rather convincing, actually. Stockton is a prominent businessman at Bunker Hill. The dead drop will be near there. Use the escape tunnel in the back to get there quicker. Bet you never met a synth before glory. It's not an easy road you've chosen, but you're never alone in this. <laughs>